when you build a website, you attack on Google Analytics. You have traditional Web2 metrics, time on site, number of signups. Here we are in crypto, everyone's speaking a big Web3 game, and they don't even know who their users are. They don't know how to build applications that those users are going to use. They don't know what metrics to look at. These are startups and they're building coins really quick. And if they don't have the proper inputs, the community doesn't have the proper inputs. And so I think that we can help service the projects themselves in a huge way. I'd love to follow up with the specific social analytics. What are the maybe the top three data sets I should start with to start thinking, okay, I've been doing TA forever, but now I need more tools to make better decisions. Uh, let's kick off with you. I'll start with the basics that people should look at. I mean, for one, we, we help distill all of this crazy social metrics down to insights. So if something has some sort of an anomaly, some kind of a, uh, an outstanding movement, we bring it to the forefront. So if, in other words, like, if the number of people talking about Ethereum is up 237% over the last 90 days, that's standing out. So we, we deliver that right away, automatically, without a user doing anything, right on that Ethereum page. You can see that first, because it's daunting. There's all these social metrics. Which one do I look at? And then if I've got like 30 favorite coins, that's a lot. I'm not going to go to every coin and click through every metric. So we help to try and bring that to the user versus them having to come to it. So those metrics could be anything. Could be market metrics, could be social metrics. Um, but I'd say in, in general, I'll break down like the top few three social ones and then there's one more I want to talk about. So um, start with social volume. So we'll pick on Bitcoin. So start looking at Bitcoin social volume because what that is, is every time in a social post, someone mentions Bitcoin or BTC or ticker BTC or hashtag BTC, we're, we're capturing all of that and we're looking at those mentions. So start seeing the trend of that over time. Is it good? Is it bad? Okay, so that's one dimension. But within those posts, um, you know, we're concerned with a lot of bots, for example. So was there engagement in those posts? Bot posts don't have much engagement, typically. So start looking, was there a lot of engagement within those Bitcoin posts? So you're gonna wanna look at social engagement. And then the third is you're gonna wanna say, well, is it one person posting a lot or is it a lot of people posting one time? Look at the number of social contributors. But I'm biased, obviously, here, because I'm part of Lunar Crush, but I think that our alt rank is the single best metric in all of crypto. And I, and I say that because everyone tells you it's going to moon. Everyone tells you this coin's going up. A lot of times that's not true, but no one talks about protecting your downside risk either. And so um, alt rank works both on the upside and it works when the market's down. What alt rank is, is it's combined. It's combining social and market activity together and it, st it stacks the whole market relative to each other. So I'll give an example. We saw Algorand was in there yesterday and Algorand has had outstanding social activity. And Algorand was ranking number one for a bit because um, combined strong social and market activity. Not only was the price up, the community activity was also simultaneously up and it jumped a lot. It was doing really well. We also have seen in this down market, um, on the downside of this, we see stable coins rank really high. When do people talk about stable coins? They don't talk about it when the market's zooming up and the whole thing's going up. They talk about it when it's super bearish. And so it's a really strong metric to look at, which if you follow it, you could potentially protect your assets and protect yourself on the downside versus only on the upside, which is where everyone wants to play and talk about. Give me 200% returns. Give me 200x returns. That's fun to talk about. It's not fun to talk about the market falling. Everything's bearish. There's wars going on. There's COVID going on. People don't want to talk about this stuff. They want to talk about making money. But it turns out, if you have a long-term perspective, protecting money is probably more important than even making it. Thank you so much. That was really, really inspirational. Anything to add on that, or did, did you get them all stolen away from you? No, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, no, it's good. I think it's, it depends on the type of investor you are and the type of person in this space. It's like if you're someone that's just starting to come to crypto and figure some stuff out, it's like what we can help you with is kind of discovering a different way to look at the market, right? And you're trying to understand the different projects and the people behind those projects. It's like. Any of the big investors, even like the like you know venture investors with seed investors, the first thing they say is we almost don't even care about the idea. What does the team look like, and who are the people that are talking about these projects, and like are they quality influencers that are out there talking about them? And so if you're someone coming in that's new, you can kind of get a deep insight and say, 
okay, this is the project that's you know a part of the metaverse that I want to invest in, even though it could be 50 years out when it actually happens. But who are some of these people? Does this person have 20 years of gaming expertise? Do they not? Are they vocal out on something like Twitter? Because it's important for executives nowadays to be out there talking about the project, explaining the roadmap in public, instilling confidence in what they're building. Um, so I think for me, it's really fun to go in there and just get this feed of just super clean data across 3,500 different cryptocurrencies. And in real time, I know exactly what's happening in the market. Right. And then if I favored a couple of things, I'm now getting contextual personalized data for the feed of information of the stuff that I'm interested in. And so I love that as like a current investor that's out there. And then for discovery or as a, someone that's out there finding something new, it's great because like John's saying, like these insights that we're bringing together, it's like it's so cool when you just you see it randomly out of nowhere. Lunar Crush will pull up this new project that you've not heard of and social activity or something's happening. There's marketing activity. And you click in there and you're like, the team is awesome, the project's awesome, how did I not know about this? And like, we stare at it all day and this still happens to us, right? And so, for me, it's it's the social metrics and then out, like alt rank, like we talk about this all the time. Like we, we definitely struck some magic there with a combination of social volume, market volume, like is this tradable, right? Especially it's like, if you think about it, if you're coming from the traditional market, some of these things are like pink sheets, they're penny stocks. like. $25,000 could really move something, right? Like you're almost taking like a very liquid position. Um, so alt rank helps you kind of suss out a little bit of does something trade? If I'm a day trader, is there enough market volume there? Can I get in and out? Is there social volume? Is the price beating Bitcoin currently? And then all those things are getting correlated together. And if they're moving in conjunction, it's going to set that alt rank off. And if there's 3,500 different cryptocurrencies, and that token is ranked number one in the alt rank, that means that there's like something very serious going on. And so what I find a lot of folks doing really well is what is the momentum of our alt rank? And as that momentum starts to kind of move, there's a lot of people that trade on, on that. So I won't give all the secret sauce away because there's, you know, something can move from the 80th alt, alt rank to 50 to 30. That might not be the secret sauce. It might be 74 to 31 to 20. So there's just a million different variations. And I think that's what makes it fun. So it's super cool because, you know, like TA is kind of like you use it, but by the time you actually identify the trend, you've already lost. The trend's to, gone. You've, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> even when that, when, that, when that trend is done, then what? Yeah. And then what again? And then what again? And so this goes into how sustainable of an investor are you? Yeah. Or are you just, I mean, how many people come in and invest in crypto and then they exit? Yeah. They don't. They stay in crypto. So... At some point, and it's sort of like, it's also a strange thing because you're like, you're exiting what part of your trade to, to live on, to pay taxes on. Like there's a whole plan around this for staying in the market. And I'd say like, if anything, TA causes a lot of people, especially the, the newbies in this space to over trade and to lose money. And so it's sort of like, TA is fun for short term. And sometimes it works really well. And obviously there's all sorts of patterns and rules to follow, but does it keep you in the market for a long period of time would be my question versus you're gonna scalp. And then my question is, and then what? What are you doing? What are you trying to achieve? Because a lot of, a lot of the, the individuals doing TA, are, they're now onto another chart on another coin and, and then they're exiting there too. Like how do you just keep staying in? It, it's a great it's, point. I mean, think about, you, like you, you have to like take a step back and think about when you're about to hit that buy button or that sell button. Like, what are you, what are you up against? What's on the other side of that? Yeah. Right. There's a ton of humans, retail investors. There's a ton of algorithmic bots that are out there fighting against you. Like, there is so much science that's put behind like beating you in that moment. And sometimes you're gonna win. Sometimes you're gonna lose. But if you can think about it from actually someone hitting the buy button on the other side, and it's like okay, I see this chart, I see this line on here. It's like, there's probably someone that's gonna be a quarter second faster than you most of the time. So unless you're, that is literally your profession, you, you know, it's not financial advice, but you, you should probably be thinking about how, like you're saying, what is your strategy? What is the point of you being invested in this? Like if you're not looking at teams and you're not looking for longevity and you're looking for something quick, I must have missed something funny, but then I would say, like look at yourself and figure out like be intellectually honest and figure out what is this trade all about but it almost makes me feel like you know like lunar crush and these alt ranks and all these signals and data sets kind of like 
give you the awareness. Oh, this project is building community and it puts that project on the map and then maybe you can move on to TA later, right? It's almost like there's a first step that like social sentiment makes a lot more sense because it gives you that awareness, the first phase, right? Of play, play it this way. So like, let's pick on Avalanche. We saw Avalanche's community grow from almost nothing to a lot and it happened before price. And so like, if you were following the community, if the community is growing, just in general, infer like, what do you think is gonna happen if that community keeps growing? And, and so, and if your objective is to earn more avalanche, then TA makes sense. Because you could say, you know what, there's an opportunity here to potentially do a trade to earn more avalanche versus like having to go buy it with your dollars. In that scenario, if you see as a trader and you have the time to invest that much time in doing it, go, go do TA to earn more avalanche. But don't do it to earn more dollars because what are you doing? Are you exiting or are you trying to earn more avalanche? And that's the thing. It goes back to like, what's your original plan? If you're like a lot of traders, if it's to earn more Bitcoin, I don't want to trade into altcoins to lose more Bitcoin. I want to trade into altcoins to potentially earn more Bitcoin. And so it doesn't always make sense to trade into alts. So TA could work. Again, your strategy is to earn more Bitcoin. So TA could work in that context, but not just to cash out. I just don't see people leaving the market. If anything, they just keep trading. So I don't know how much sense that makes because you could trade into dollars and lose Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it really comes down to your strategy. Stacking sets. Yeah. So let's ask yeah. you guys, we're talking about alts. So obviously you have a token as well. You've also launched a DeFi product recently. Can you tell us a little bit specifically about what you guys are doing at the moment? What is making, getting you excited, get out of bed, you know, feel pumped and come to these conferences these days? I can talk about the token a little bit if you, then you want to talk about DeFi and product sure. stuff. I mean, you know, when you look out there at the traditional way that a, a company is built or a project is built, you know, the, the incentive model, right? Like I, I always use the example of, you know, you've got Alexa and like Google Home, right? And if I have Alexa and I'm paying for Amazon Prime, I'm just paying every month and I'm training their AI. I'm training their machine learning all day. I'm training it, training it. And then if I want to go over to Google, I can't take anything with me. I have to now go pay over here again and train their thing. And I'm not getting anything from it. They're selling all of my data. Like, what do I get? I get, yes, uh, a bot that tells me a couple of cool things and that's convenient, that's great. But is, it, is that a fair shake that I'm getting, right? And so when you look at that, the model of the future is the customer and, and the person that's behind, you know, what's being built on our side. We have all these customers. We wanted them to be able to have value along with helping train everything. So if they come onto our site, and they're helping us train our machine learning, they're you know, providing opinions, right? What do they get for it? If we also just charge them $200 a month, and then you know, we don't fulfill on our promise of what our product does, and they have to go somewhere else, and we just extracted all that value from them, that's just not the way of the future. That's not what crypto is and Web3 is trying to build. And so for us, Lunar Token was the way of opening that door and you know, when you come on to Lunar Crush, you can earn different levels of access and all you have to do is hold Lunar in your own wallet and you get access to all of that. And if we don't do our jobs well or the community doesn't do their jobs well and the product's not good anymore, you can take that value and walk away with it, right? And so it's like, that's what crypto has enabled is this entirely new model for projects to bring in the community and grow and it's, it's a marketing tool, it's a, you know, it's a roadmap, you know, identifier. You bring your community in, and I think that's really the special part about, you know, what a, a utility token or, you know, what any other token can bring into any project out there. Like, I'm waiting for Netflix coin. I'm waiting for Twitter coin. I'm waiting for all of this because it's just a better model. Um, and so we wanted to, being a part of the industry for so long, we're like, how do we, like, how do we fit this in? How do we do it? And, you know, even though it probably feels like we did it, way later than a lot of a lot of people in the space, we were thoughtful about how we wanted to do it. And a lot of people build tokens, they launch something and then the promise of a product later. We, we Our product was in the market for years before we built it into every single facet of what we do. Um, and so, yeah, we're really excited about it. We're gonna keep building and you know keep fulfilling on our promise to the community. That's amazing. I think that's kind of like the main motivation as well, right? It's like you say, you're not locked into that specific company or their specific products. You can do take whatever the value you want. With you, yeah, you right? take it with like, you, it, yeah. It's like if you own a Tesla and you've driven everywhere around the world, think about how much like you've trained their models, right? And like, yes, it's a better car. You're getting a little bit better experience, but how cool would it be is if you could pick up some of that value and take it to somewhere else, right? And like the network effect of having the community of that size is everyone wins in that scenario where it just was not possible before with fiat. 
Awesome, beautifully said. Moving on to DeFi, the staking has been going on fire with Lunar. Yeah. Tell us a little more, brother. Yeah, so uh, we launched LunarFi, which is kind of our first, sort of like an umbrella over many different DeFi projects, uh, products that we're gonna build. And so our first product was staking. Really good trends, continues to go up. Um, but that's just kind of one example of, of the things that we're gonna build into Lunar. And when we talk about investors on our site, there's a whole other side to this. And that's really on the, if there is such a thing as B2B or business to business in, in crypto, we're also focused on the industry because, and we're, we're focused on it from a Lunar perspective because um, you know, there, are, there are ways that we can help the community grow their own awareness. There are ways that we can help the, the industry also build social applications. And we look at Lunar as kind of a key integrated part of that. Um, whether those projects are paying with Lunar or uh, Lunar is kind of a piece of the equation down the road. Um, but we're pretty excited on the industry side because from a, I guess like, again, from a B2B side, the crypto industry itself is underserved. Um, there's not enough applications, not enough tools, not enough ability to gain awareness as a new project. And we want to help them. And we kind of look at Lunar as going to kind of play a role over there, as well as as we continue to build utility on the lunarcrush.com side of things. There's a lot that we're going to be building and we're going to expand the applications and the product side is, we have years ahead. Of, of what we know we want to do. Super pumped, guys, super pumped. One random question, by the way. You ready for a random question? If Maybe. you had to identify one superpower with John and you with Joe, what would it be? I could start. Um, John has an incredible, it's like normally what you have to do with uh, building product is you have to do a ton of research, right? You got to figure out who these people are, what are their personas, what do we build, ask them, get all this research done, get a bunch of qualitative and quantitative analysis. John does an amazing job at, he is the user. He almost doesn't even need to do research because he's already like the person, right? And like, whether it's building, we're building for each other, we're building for ourselves, we're building. It's like, we, we've been able to skip so many like levels of time and research by just John being like, well, user wouldn't want that, they'd want this. And then you build it and they're like, oh my God, that, that's exactly what they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a combination of that. And then also when we work together, it was, it was one of my favorite stories. John, before Lunar Crush, he always rearranged his office, like five times more than most people rearrange their office. And I was like, John likes new, he likes fresh UI, he likes fresh UX, it finds its way in the way he builds product. Cause it's like, he's like, even though he did it one time, he's like, I gotta build it, we gotta try, we gotta rearrange that. I'm like, we just did it. It's like rearranging your bathroom every time, but every time you do it, it's better. And it's like this endless knack to say like, I think I could do better than my previous self. My wife picks on me with that one. She goes, I can't, we've been together a long time. And she's like, I can't believe you, you haven't gotten sick of me. You're sick of so many other things. And it's, it's, it works though. Man, he builds relationships like no other. Like, he'd be like he'll be like, yeah, I got this person on the phone. I'm like, how? Like all the time, it's, it's consistent. And so like definitely builds partnerships, builds relationships, a huge people person. So I think there's a lot of strength there. And you know what? That's another big flaw of a lot of companies. They don't have a, someone that can go out there and they're not afraid to just walk in and talk to that CEO over there. And so that's definitely Joe's superpower is to get in there. Not too many people can do that. So very exciting. Amazing, we did the full work, cycle Joe. and the bromance, right? That bromance full cycle. Do you guys have a last message for the community before I go, like a closing message or a closing comment? Go check out Swiss Borg. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Go check out Lunar Crush, of course. Anything else you guys want to share? Just like stay curious. And like if you're someone that wants to come into the industry and get a job, it's like just DM someone on Twitter. Just get in there and like start learning. You're already probably researching four or five hours a day. Just come work in the industry. It's time. Quit your daytime jobs and yeah. join the family, join the community. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Join us every Wednesday, premiere at a PC near you, eight o'clock BST. See you next week, guys. Is this an exclusive announcement that we're getting? It is, it is. I want to be more Legitimizing was something that I think talks about the nature of reality and the framework of existence. It's not woo woo, it's literally here and now we can see these patterns. I want to put it on chain for everyone to see transparently. Thank you so much for watching the show. We love you for all the support and tune in next week for the next episode of Kryptonites.